the last few weeks, we've been working a lot with acid mine drainage. So it's very acidic water that is flowing over uh, coal waste and basically leaching out rare earths into solution. And so it's very valuable for us to work with. And so we have shipped some in here, roughly 5,000 gallons, and we have been slowly increasing the pH in different increments to get out what we don't want and then to get out the rare earths as our end goal. We pump it in from our outside tanks that we use for storage uh, into a holding tank inside where we then pump it at a constant flow rate into our reaction tank. Now in our reaction tank, uh, we're raising initially the pH up to 3.2 to get out any residual iron and then we'll filter it and then bring it back to the reaction tank and raise it to a pH of 4.5 to get out aluminum, both of which we don't want when we go to process our rare earths later on down the line. And so after going through the reaction tank, we'll come over to our filter. And so we have a series of filters that we use to get out the precipitate after we raise that pH. And so this one we usually use for our waste, our aluminum and our iron, and the far one we typically use for our rare earths. And so when we get out quote unquote rare earths, they're in like an oxide form. And it's from here that we will then redissolve them uh, into oxalic acid and uh, obtain a rare earth oxalate that we can then sell. So this is largely an aluminum uh, cake with some iron, residual iron left mixed in, and also perlite which is used to uh, block the filter cloth so that we make sure that we're doing a good job filtering when it goes through. My responsibilities here at the plant mostly align with kind of a quality control guy. So I'm out here, I'll be taking samples, making sure everything's running well. I'll take those samples into the lab, analyze them, make sure their pH is holding steady. And I also do run lab tests on the inside to find out how to move on to the next step in our process as efficiently as possible. This is actually the beginning of our process here at the plant. What we take is the waste stream from the coal processing plant. And when they would originally just get rid of this, we now take it. From this pile, we sort the middle weight particles. There are some that are heavy, some that are light, but we like these middle ones. That's where we find the money particles, our rare earth elements sitting in there. This is how we get this, and then we crush it a couple times into a very fine dust. And then and we load it in top of the roaster. It spins about, depending on the speed, 45 minutes to an hour inside that tube alone. And that tube is running at about 800 degrees Celsius. So it is hot, it's hot over here. The reason we do this step, it improves the efficiency in which we leach in our next step. So my main responsibility is to run the ICP with Daniel, which is the inductively coupled plasma machine, which is what we use to take data on our samples. It basically tells us what elements are in the samples and the concentrations of the elements. But in the lab here, I basically am in charge of sample prep. So I will dilute the samples, and by diluting the samples, that makes them recognizable by the ICP, and it makes the concentrations lower so that we can actually get better data. One other test that we do is a leaching test, and that's where we dissolve our material from the roaster into a solution, and it basically tells us if we're roasting the material at the correct rate. I've learned a lot of lab skills here that will be valuable in the future. I've only taken one general chemistry lab so far, so I I feel like I'm getting a head start. I would have never thought that a chemical engineer could work with a mining engineer in the same setting. In addition to operating the ICP with the help of Gracie, I do a lot of the data analysis for our results. From a process engineering side, I am tasked with identifying the problems that lead to variation in our data or contamination of our samples and figuring out what we can do to adjust. Um, in order to get the most accurate, most precise results. A couple thousand points by the end of the month, and then how do you keep track of all that? And then we put them in individual pages, and I send them to the person who's asking for the results. So we have to keep up with the demand that they're, they're giving to us, but also have that uh, pretty strict quality control program implemented and not make compromises in ways that can affect the, the validity or the accuracy of our data. So figuring out how to output the data so anyone who looks at it can understand what's going on, it's a very important job uh, because if the results aren't right, then we really don't know what's going on in the plant. 
So like when I have trouble with what I'm doing, because there's no one else working on this and there's not much that's published out there relating to this topic, it can be very difficult because there's no real references. But on the same side, it makes you feel a lot better once you are making progress and you can see it because you're really the only one in the world doing it right now. So being able to work on something like that, it's, it's pretty cool. We've had students employed throughout the entire cycle from 2014 onwards. We've actually given them very significant projects. Running certain parts of our circuit, they run under standard conditions, they take samples, they process the samples through the lab, they get the data, they analyze the data. One of the greatest privileges as a, as a professor is actually seeing your students succeed. When I give presentations about the successes of this project, I always point to the list of, of students who served on this project and provided important roles. And uh, when you look at that list and where they are today, you know, that's the real success, in my opinion, of what we were able to achieve here, in addition to all the technical stuff that we've, we've uh, generated.